Unlike the other research designs, the experimental method allows for the manipulation of specific variables. Experimental design allows you to ask the question, does X cause Y? For example, does sugar cause hyperactivity in children? In an experiment, the researcher manipulates one or more variables and measures others, while attempting to control for all other factors. By controlling the environment, it ensures that the only difference between the groups is a difference in the variable of interest. So, an experimental research design has two types of variables, an independent variable and a dependent variable. The independent variable is the one that's manipulated and is the proposed cause in the research question. If we go back to the example of whether sugar causes hyperactivity in children, this would be sugar. The dependent variable is the one that's measured and it's the proposed effect in the research question. So back to our question on whether sugar causes hyperactivity in children, this would be activity levels. Although an experiment can have many independent and dependent variables, the most basic experimental design has to have at least one independent variable and one dependent variable. Let's design a simple experiment to ask about the effect of sugar on the activity levels in children. In this experiment, we're interested in the effect of sugar. So we're going to try and keep everything else the same. Then we can compare whether the group given sugar is more active than the group that did not receive sugar. If we design our experiment carefully, we can potentially conclude that a difference in activity is being caused by sugar or is not. So first we recruit a sample of participants. In order to ensure that the groups are comparable, before we start the experimental manipulation, it's best to randomly assign our participants to groups. The first group receives sugar, whereas the second group receives a sweet substance without sugar. In this case, we'll use artificial sugar. The group that received the active ingredient, sugar, we call the experimental group, while the group that did not receive the active ingredient, but instead received artificial sugar, is known as the control group. At this point in our experimental design, we've just manipulated our independent variable. Remember, our dependent variable measures the possible effect of the independent variable. It depends on the independent variable. So, in both of our two groups, we're going to measure activity levels. This will allow us to see whether or not the sugar is causing a change in the activity level. Now, if we see a difference in the activity level by statistically comparing the two groups, and notice that the activity levels for the children in the experimental group, those that receive sugar, are higher than the children in the control group, those that did not receive sugar, we can conclude that the sugar caused this effect. This is because we have theoretically controlled all other possible variables, leaving the only change between the two groups of whether or not they received sugar. Further, if we don't see a difference between the two groups, then we can conclude that the sugar did not contribute to an increase in activity. That concludes our look at experimental design. Unlike other types of designs, it is only with experimental designs that we can test causative relationships.